step fix cost. You're going to take a quick look at the lecture outline. We'll first define step fix cost, changes in variable cost. Then we will discuss the limitations with semi variable cost, the definition. Okay, so let's give an example. When you rent a warehouse that can take, let's say, 500,000 units of goods, if you store 100,000, you will still pay for the total cost of the warehouse, which is fixed for 200, 300, 400 it will still bring you the same cost. So the fixed cost does not change as you increase the unit or the activity level, which is the storage that happens in it. Now with step fixed cost, what it's saying is that the moment you move outside the 500,000, that is the full capacity of the warehouse, you're going to incur additional cost, which is fixed, which is also going to be fixed for a particular group of activity. So if you move to 600,000, you have to go for a second warehouse which has the capacity of 500,000 which will also bring you another rent to pay so when you produce 600,000 your fixed cost i say if you pay 100,000 it will move from 100,000 to 200,000 so that's what step fixed cost means it is fixed for a certain level of activity so when there is a step fixed cost you would have to deduct the step fixed cost from the relevant total cost so when the highest level of activity exceeds the production level which will bring in a step fixed cost you have to deduct that extra cost from the total cost of the highest activity level then you now go through the earlier steps that we had finding the variable cost per unit then you find the fixed cost then you can now go ahead and work out any output or activity level that you deem fit let's test our understanding so maintenance costs for the first four months of 2015 are as follows. So for January is 450 units leading to $5,500. February is 420 units with a cost of 4350 March is 380 units with a cost of 4150 April is 400 units with a cost of 4250 So there is a step up of $1,000 in fixed cost when activity crosses 400 units. So we have to calculate fixed and variable cost using the high and low method. What this question is telling us is that when you pick any activity level which is higher than 400, the normal fixed cost that we are supposed to be expecting is 1,000 higher. So for us to solve it, we'll first have to deduct the step fixed cost of 1,000 from the relevant total cost. Mind you, the formula requires that we pick the total cost at the highest activity level. So when we come here, the total cost at the highest activity level was 5,500. We will take the 1,000 from it, which will give us 4,500. We will now move on to solve the variable cost per unit. That is the total cost at the highest activity level less the total cost at the low activity level divided by units at the highest production level less the unit at the low level. Total cost at the highest activity level used to be 5,500. We have minus the step fixed cost. So it is now 4,500. That of the lower or the lowest activity level is 4,150. The highest activity level is 450. The unit at the lowest activity level is 380. So it will still bring us to 350 divided by 70, which will give us a variable cost per unit of $5. We now have to find the fixed cost. The fixed cost is the total cost at the highest activity level. Then we less the total variable cost. Total variable cost is the unit at the highest activity level times the variable cost per unit that we just solved. Total cost at the highest activity level is $4,500. We less it by the total variable cost of $2,250, which is the highest activity level of 450 units multiplied by the variable cost per unit of $5 which will give us a fixed cost amount of 2250 We now move on to when there is a change in variable cost. In this situation, we are going to look at when the variable cost per unit does change. It can be as a result of a discount that has been offered. So what we'll do is that we'll pick two activity levels within the unchanged variable cost per unit. Okay. Then we estimate the cost for an output considering the change so let's test our understanding 
So maintenance costs for the first four months of 2015 are as follows. For January, they produce 450 units at a cost of 5,500. For February, they produce 420 units at a cost of 4,350. In March, they produce 380 units at a cost of 4,150. In April, they produce 400 units at a cost of 4,250. Now, the question is saying that there is a 10% reduction in variable cost for output above 400 units. So let's calculate the fixed and variable cost using the high-low method and also the total cost for 700 units. As the theory suggests, I would have to pick two activity levels with their cost within the unchanging variable cost. So the question is saying that anything above 400 will lead to a 10% drop. So for solution, total cost at their highest activity level less total cost at their lowest activity level divided by the unit at the activity level which is highest less the unit at the lowest activity level total cost for 400 that is in april 4250 less the total cost in march for 380 units which is 4150 we divided by the difference of the unit at the highest activity level and the unit at the lowest activity level so it is 400 less 380 we will get 100 divided by 20 so the variable cost per unit is five dollars if we want to estimate the fixed cost the total cost at the highest activity level must be less by the total variable cost so what we'll do is i will pick the 4250 then we'll less it by 2000 so the 2000 came about by multiplying the highest activity level unit of 400 by the variable cost per unit of five dollars that is going to lead to a fixed cost of 2250 so if we are to calculate the total cost at 700 units so here total cost is the fixed cost then we look at the total variable cost mind you because the 700 has gone beyond the threshold we would have to reduce the variable cost per unit by 10 percent the variable cost per unit as calculated is five dollars we are multiplying it by 90 percent because it is supposed to enjoy a 10 percent discount then we multiply by the activity level so total cost will be 2250 fixed cost plus the five dollars times the 90 percent times the 700 unit which will be 2250 plus 3150 then the total cost will now be five thousand four hundred dollars lastly we'll look at the limitations of the high and low method the first is that it relies on historical cost data the highest and lowest cost and units that we are using are for previous periods and we use that to calculate for total cost for units that are ahead or in the future we cannot be certain that the factors that were present in the prior years will reflect in that in the future years so there is a limitation or a flaw there the second is that it assumes activity level is the only deciding factor if you look at the formula we pick the total cost for the highest and lowest activity level and proceed to work out the variable cost per unit then the fixed cost per unit for example the level of wastage can cause an activity level to have an increased total cost not necessarily because of the number of output that was generated next is that it only uses two values to predict cost you pick the highest and you pick the lowest and you assume that the cost that will come out will be accurate to use to deduce cost for future outputs there's a possibility that the other two costs that were not used could have certain factors or certain criteria that does not cause it to fall in line with the predictions or the outcomes of the two extreme values that have been used and lastly when there are discounts available at large quantities there could be a distortion in the assumptions that are used because if the quantity at the highest level and its cost have discounts so if care is not taken and it's not worked out it's going to cause unreliable predictions to be made 